So right now I'm going to check out the first wireless charging public roadway for electric vehicles in America, right here in the city of Detroit. Tonight, the new technology that could redefine what it means to go electric. Here's Maggie Vespa. On its list of claims to automotive fame. Okay, here we go. Detroit can add America's first electric avenue. The battery was at 66%. We've been driving a few minutes and now it's at 68. Exactly. A public road able to wirelessly charge EV batteries as they drive over asphalt. The technology is under our feet. Like it's under the surface of the road. Literally. The secret, rubber-coated copper coils embedded in the road that correspond with a special receiver under the vehicle. It may not look like much, but what I am walking on currently is an electrified roadway. So Electrion is the uh, Israeli-based company that um, this setup is designed by and uh, you know this is pretty groundbreaking to be honest pun intended Um, once again the very first electrocuted (laughs) roadway in America is right here in the city of Detroit Um, they say it uses copper inductive charging coils embedded beneath the street which allows for electric vehicles with receivers to charge while driving, idling, or parking above these coils as we can kind of imagine that they're under these white dots here. Uh, And that's pretty impressive, right? Uh, And one thing I'm wondering is if they sell a conversion kit for my Ford Ranger. Uh, I highly doubt that's the case though, but Uh, This is located in the city, and it is not too far from the Michigan Central train station, which is Ford's soon-to-be and or current headquarters. Not sure if they're done with the construction on that site or not. I know they're getting um, close to being completed, but, uh, you know, of course this you know, couldn't be anywhere else but next to the headquarters of Ford Motors. Uh, I'm wondering what's in these boxes here. I'm guessing that these are the on off switches (laughs) for the roads. But, uh, you know, once again, this is pretty amazing stuff to be walking on an electrified road that uh, has the power to charge vehicles wirelessly. Uh, You know, we're living in the future, guys. So maybe one day I'll be able to put something like this down at a development of mine where people can charge their vehicles while they park. No need to plug anything in. And, you know, the magic just happens seamlessly i got a question for all of my aspiring developers out there and um, that is are you comfortable guaranteeing the loan for your development as an aspiring developer in a lot of cases or in most scenarios the funding partners will not loan you any money unless you are guaranteeing that loan and so um, you know you may find yourself on the hook for hundreds of thousands if not millions of dollars um, you know if your project fails if your development ultimately fails and this is something that a lot of developers don't really think about until you're at the closing table or you know you're you know hashing out your details of your line of credits and and loans and and things of that nature but um, in my scenario and with the current project that I'm highlighting with you all today 
uh, I'm basically on the hook for millions of dollars if the project does not work out the way we're intending it to. And so that question I have for you is once again, will you be comfortable? Would you be comfortable guaranteeing the um, construction loan uh, and long-term financing for the project that you potentially are, are working on now or eventually will find yourself working on in the near future and um, you gotta you gotta think through that you gotta see you know what that may look like um, if you own property with other people uh, do you have to get them to sign off on certain aspects of the guarantee the guarantor um, a, you know assignment of, of of the loan or whatever you want to consider it so basically all I'm trying to make sure I uh, ask you um, is once again would you be comfortable putting your neck out on the line for hundreds of thousands if not millions of dollars um, and if the answer is yes then you're my type of person you're my type of risk taker that ultimately will find yourself in a predicament that um, allows for you to hopefully tackle larger projects than what you may or may not be used to um, at this current moment, right? And so really, really, you know, something to think about at the end of the day because you're putting, you're putting yourself at risk, um, you know, financially. And one project could bankrupt you if you're not careful, if you're not strategic, um, you know, and, you know, if you're married, if you have a personal house that's in both you and your spouse's name, um, and you have to guarantee that, or you have to add that as collateral for the development loan that you're in the process of, of closing on, and your project happens to, to falter, what happens, you know? Uh, you know, and, and so I just wanted to make sure I highlight that as I am um, going through an, up, an update of even my life insurance policy, making sure that um, it has been assigned or a funding partner has been assigned uh, as a beneficiary to my personal life insurance policy. Right. They're reaching out. They're going through their documentation saying that, you know, we don't see that this has officially been assigned by your life insurance um, company. And so I'm on the phone talking to the life insurance company, you know, verifying that this funding partner is, in fact, um, assigned to the policy. But, you know, think about that. Would you be comfortable putting your funding partner as uh, and as, as a beneficiary um, on your personal life insurance, right? Uh, that's that's something to think about. So we've uh, we've tightened up security a little bit. We're waiting on a lot of our windows, and we decided that we board up one of the staircases and uh, give ourselves only two options to get into the building. Oh, nice. So we've closed up the stairwell, going up the stairs to the units. Uh, any which way that we could, people could come into the building. Really trying to cover costs right now, of not spending a lot of money that we can use elsewhere on protection, waiting on windows and frames. So this was a uh, very cost-effective way at the beginning stages of construction. This is the vestibule. We're pouring it a little different than we normally do. We normally would want to pour everything at once, but again, trying to work with the owner and future tenants that will be moving in, I can pour sections allowing me to do any of my underground and really pushing that cost down 
uh, for Eddie and his future tenants. With a lot of the uh, a lot of restaurant build outs, what the neighborhood is telling us what they want to see come into the to the neighborhood would be a restaurant. A restaurant requires a lot of drains, grease traps, a lot of different floor drains, the kitchen line. So there's quite a bit of underground work that goes into it. So instead of recutting all the concrete floors, we try to manage it so we do it once and really drive that cost down. This is a utility room. It's uh, the elevator, the electrical maintenance closets, a few things that everything gets brought back to the water mains, the fire suppression, and we need to have this slab poured. So we're able to get everything that we need that's required in that room. And we'll pour that now to continue to keep the job rolling. So we got the buck construction, digging our power lines back for DTE. So right now we're opening this trench up. The electricians will put their pipes, we'll get it inspected, and then we'll get it back filled back in. We got three five inch pipes roughly that go in there. We take it to the alley, DTE picks it up from the alley underground. And we give it to them. We got a nice clean site today. Got a number of trades working from electrical, plumbing. We got the masons here. We got concrete that are that's scheduled to be poured. I'm on the roof now, it's a bit slippery, so if I slip and fall, I hope you guys don't laugh at me. But, project is moving along. And uh, I just wanted to chime in, give you a bit of a visual update of it all. Really uh, happy with the overall progress that um, we're making and yeah that's about it but with that said uh, this is the mayor of Flux City Flux City signing off I really appreciate you uh, chiming in to listen to me ramble and uh, I would greatly appreciate a like subscribe uh, hit the notification bell I will be providing uh, more detail about this project and other projects uh, in future videos. So uh, make sure you, ch you chime in.